Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I today are speaking with Dr. Liz Lister. Hey, Dr. Liz, great to see you again. Thank you, likewise. Um, you, in the past, we've talked about uh, hormones. You are a hormonal expert, hormone expert, uh, as well as a gynecologist and an MD and an expert in lots of health issues. Um, and I wanted to ask you about, because we've talked about um, estrogen and testosterone, two major, I call them male-female uh, hormones. And I know we've men and women both have both hormones. Um, the ma primary male testosterone uh, hormone for men is testosterone, but we do have estrogen. And I wanted to ask you, what does estrogen do for us men? Why, why are we producing any of it? Great question. Exactly like you said, testosterone is the main hormone for men, while estrogen is one of the main hormones for women. But you, as you were correctly saying, we each have some of the other hormone. The main reason that men have some estrogen is that in the process of metabolizing and breaking down the testosterone to be used in a man's body, it, there's an enzyme that converts a little bit of it into estrogen. The enzyme, you do not have to remember this, the enzyme is called an aromatase enzyme. And so a lot of studies have been done to ask that very question, what is the role of estrogen in men? So it appears, we've talked before about all the benefits that men experience from testosterone, muscle building, mood, strength, cardiac health, cardiovascular health. And so it turns out that having a little bit of estrogen, having the right amount, is part of that formula for success. It appears that estrogen is involved in a good balance for fat metabolism. So men have an easier time with their weight overall compared to us women because of testosterone, but it's also because of a little bit of the role of estrogen. So it affects the men with the right amount of estrogen, not too high, not too low, have lower fat, lower body fat, better libido, better libido, and also improved erectile function. So again, it's kind of a, a Goldilocks has to be right in the right range for uh, men to have all the benefits of testosterone. Hmm. So I just went to see my doctor and he's ordered a bunch of tests, you know, to go down the, do one of everything, I think it's his mantra. Um, but Included that is a testosterone test. Will that measure uh, the female hormone? And, and how does he know how much? No, it has to be measured on its own uh, as the estradiol, estradiol. So for example, if a man has a good testosterone level, but he's not feeling well, then it would be helpful to check the estradiol level because if it's too low, that could be part of the issue. More often, it's because it is too high. And mm. then it's very, it's not difficult to give an aromatase inhibitor. That is something that uh, I use pretty often with my male patients to help make sure there's not too much estrogen. Another problem that can happen with too much, well, a few things can happen with too much estrogen. One that's really common, for example, if men are replenishing testosterone and they're experiencing acne. It can be due to the type of testosterone being used, and it can also be from converting into too much estrogen. So giving that estrogen blocker uh, can really help. Yeah. It's all about the balance, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because we know that, that estrogen is protective of the brain. We, we know this from women. We know this, that it protects against various neurodegenerative disorders. And so we don't want to, for example, if I'm using an estrogen blocker in a man, I also want to make sure that we're not suppressing too much of the conversion of the testosterone into sure. estrogen. Because as we're talking about, a little bit is very, very important for men's health. All right. So if yeah. I could then, um, since this is uh, actually, this is 
pretty new information to me. And, you know, I've read a lot about a lot of stuff, uh, but I know a little about a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, this is not something that even in, you know, locker room has been much discussed. So the two questions I have are, uh, other than because if you're fatigued, that's not a sort of a good enough sign to say to somebody, maybe I should ask about this. But my, my uh, secondary question is, uh, most uh, uh, men who have a regular uh, physician that they see regularly is a man. I would I would assume um, what would even cause that physician to have much knowledge about estrogen deficiency or too much in a man? Or is it, is it widely known or are we really just hoping we find the right uh, uh, person who happens to have read about it? I think it's more B, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, it's not taught in great detail in medical school. It's probably taught in the specialties, for example, in urology, in terms of men, doctors that men go to see. So it really is a question of finding somebody who understands hormones and hormone metabolism and who's willing to do the testing that is required. Mm. So it'll be basically, the... basically, I guess if, about... if, if you're older, uh, you might uh, begin to think of are these issues right. affecting me um, more likely than if you were younger? And then you might go see somebody like yourself. That is true. That's absolutely true. And that's because of the overall decline of testosterone in men. We've talked mm. about this before. It starts sure. at, by age 30. Men's sure. testosterone levels usually start to decline. And so it's very important. Uh, another one I want to make sure to mention, you talked about locker room talk a moment ago. And I believe this does get talked about and that is gynecomastia in men, which is the development of breast tissue in men, that can be a sign of too much estrogen being formed from the conversion of testosterone. And again, it's often pretty easy to treat uh, using an estrogen blocker. Those medicines, by the way, they're FDA approved for women, uh, usually after breast cancer treatment, because in those women, we wanna block the formation of estrogen However, it's very common, very well studied off-label use to, uh, for example, to treat gynecomastia in men and other issues that they might be having if they're making too much estrogen. Hmm. Well, I, for one, am going to get go to my doctor and ask him to test for, I wrote it down, estradiol? Yes. Yeah. That's the active, that's the potent form of estrogen. Yeah, and it, it sounds like that wouldn't be in any of the standardized tests that he's checking Not off. Not really. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can't hurt. You have an it, inside. You have an inside. I want to know. You have an inside information line, John. <laughs> well, you'll have to come back, John, and and let us know what the result of that is, and we can have like an update. You know, a a ninety second update. Here's what my number was, and and he said, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Dr. Liz, thank you so much. Great information, as always. Welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.